Welcome to our Microsoft project for software development. But why do we need a project plan for software development? It's not a bridge, is it? It's not something that we can physically see. It's not a structure that really does need some quality planning. If we make a mistake, we don't have to rebuild something at some massive cost. And nobody can get hurt. If a bridge collapses, if the construction goes wrong, if the bridges don't meet, nobody gets physically hurt with a piece of software. All those kind of things don't really apply to software development. It's not tangible, it's not physical, we can't get hold of it. So why do we need a project plan? Perhaps you feel we don't. Perhaps we don't need to run through software development planning. If we did, or if you opened your mind and thought about it, and we put some effort into software development planning, then we might get some full-blown software applications that although there is this planning effort at the beginning, means that the process is smoother, faster, and therefore cheaper, which is the important bit. Now we can break down software development into a number of stages. There's the initiation stage, so the start point, the discussion with the clients and developers to decide really what you want. There is the planning stages itself, really the biggest part, planning the scope, planning the requirements, planning the development planning, the testing planning, the deployment planning, the maintenance planning, the acceptance planning, and even the project plan itself. So there's a lot of work in the planning stages, just as there is for a bridge or an opera house. The execution stage is vitally important. In the execution stages of development software, we're looking at the design, the design testing, the actual development of that final product, tests for that product, the deployment of that product, all the quality assurance, technical infrastructure, any documentation, any training required, all has to be built into your software development plan. And then we build in planning for after the development of the piece of software. So looking at maintenance and actually user acceptance of that piece of software. If we then explore each of these stages in just a little more detail, you'll see that perhaps we should be doing software development planning after all. It is a bridge. So the initiation stage really involves the clients and the end users discussing really what's needed. Any problems can be laid out, problems with the current system, envisaged problems with a future system, and then decide on a solution which brings us into planning for our software development. So all the aims and targets must also be set out at this stage so that we know where to drive the plan and whether we are on plan. So the first stage of really any project, not just software development, is the planning stages. And in here, we would look at scoping for the project. So that's deciding what the project is going to be about, its aims, its targets, requirements gathering. So going out and interviewing current users, maybe even market research to decide what this piece of software actually needs to do. And then we need to build each of our plans. So the development plan, how we're going to build the actual piece of software, testing plan, so how we're going to test this piece of software so it doesn't break like a bridge, mustn't break after it's built, the deployment of that software, so that's pushing it out to its end users, maintenance of the software, end user acceptance of the software, which is vitally important. With a bridge, we can see people want a bridge or they don't want a bridge. Those people that don't want a bridge, when they've got the bridge, they need to make sure that they're bought in and they accept it. They're not carrying on with the ferry. And then we need to build our own project plan as well. During the execution, so the actual building of the software, we need to look at the design stages, the testing stages, development stage itself, the tests, the deployment of the software, quality assurance of that software, any technical infrastructure requirements, building of any documentation that will accompany the software out into the big wide world, and potentially any training that will need to be undertaken with those end users. And then finally, we can close off the project by looking at maintenance and support, building that in as a plan for the project, end user acceptance, and then finally signing off the project and getting paid all that dosh for building a software development plan that then produces an appropriate piece of software for whatever the problem was in the first place. So even though it's not a tangible physical item that will span a valley, it is still a tangible item that can be measured, can be planned, and really does need to be planned out so that timescales and costs can be tightly controlled. And that's really what we're going to aim to do with our Microsoft project in this particular title.